The Jerusalem Channel is made possible by viewer support. Thanks for watching. Like a thief in the night, Jesus can come at any moment. That's one of the basic doctrines of the historic Christian church, whether you believe it or not. The Bible explains that Jesus is coming to snatch away true believers who are described in Scripture as the Bride of Messiah. But there's also another event anticipated by the church, and that's the physical return of Jesus to planet Earth to rule this world from the throne of his father David. That's what we call the second coming. But before that happens, there are certain conditions that must be fulfilled here on planet Earth. And I'll explain what must come to pass, and it all hinges on one little word. Hello, I'm Christine Darg. In my years of living in Israel and visiting Israel, I've been a student of eschatology. That's the study of the last days and end time events. The most anticipated fulfillment of Bible prophecy hinges on the fact that Jesus can't return to earth as King of Kings and Lord of Lords until certain conditions outlined in the Bible are met. However, if you believe in the rapture of the church, there are no conditions for the rapture. That's when Jesus will come suddenly in the atmosphere to elope with his bride, the church, consisting of living and dead members who will be resurrected and called out. Those of us who are living at that moment will be changed instantly into immortal bodies without ever dying. The rapture is a doctrine that explains the eminency scriptures. By that I mean the set of scriptures that teach an imminent and any moment return of the Lord. You see, there are plenty of scriptures that suggest Jesus will come suddenly, like a thief in the night, without any warning. But there are other Bible verses that teach Jesus cannot return physically to earth until certain conditions are fulfilled. In fact, there are at least five Bible verses about the end times that hinge upon the word until. I've discovered these until verses in the Bible must be fulfilled before Jesus, the Messiah, can actually return physically to set up his rule here on earth as Israel's Davidic king and as the world's ruler from Jerusalem. So let's examine these five untils specified in Scripture. When Jesus came into the world for the first time as the Son of Man, born of a virgin, he came in the role of a suffering servant to fulfill certain prophecies such as Isaiah chapter 53. Jesus painfully accomplished the hard work of making atonement for Israel and for all of mankind. The work of atonement on the cross is finished. It's a fait accompli, thankfully. And God set his approval upon the Messiah's work of atonement on the altar of the cross by raising Jesus from the dead. Tragically, Jesus was rejected by the religious leaders of his day. And John 1.11 testifies that he came unto his own, but his own received him not. Jesus entered Jerusalem as the Messiah right on schedule, perfectly on God's timeline, according to certain prophecies in the book of Daniel, chapter 9. Yet the Jewish leaders failed to recognize the time of the Messiah's visitation. They rejected Jesus, and thus the Davidic kingdom was postponed. After the resurrection of Jesus and immediately prior to his ascension to heaven, his disciples asked him a very logical question. They saw he was alive. They saw he was resurrected. And so they assumed, Lord, will you restore the Davidic kingdom to Israel at this time? They thought he would certainly be vindicated right away. But the Lord surprised them by telling them that first, 
They had to preach the gospel of forgiveness of sins and make disciples for him among all nations. In fact, he had already informed them in his Olivet Discourse sermon of the timetable. In that discourse, Jesus said that the Jewish people would be put to the sword and they'd be scattered into the nations and that, and that Jerusalem would be trampled upon by the Gentile nations, but not forever. He said in Luke 21, 24, that Jerusalem would be trampled under the feet of the Gentiles only until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Indeed, Jerusalem had been under continual Gentile domination only until recent times in world history. You see, 50 years ago, East Jerusalem, containing all the holy sites, was miraculously recaptured by the Jewish people in the lightning Six-Day War. At that time, Jesus' prophecy about Jerusalem began to be fulfilled, and a paradigm shift began, changing Jerusalem's rule from Gentile to Jewish. However, the times of the Gentiles will continue again in the future for a short period during Jacob's trouble, what the Bible calls the Great Tribulation under the rule of the coming world dictator known as the Antichrist. But presently this year, we're celebrating a jubilee of 50 years of Jewish rule over their capital, Jerusalem, after nearly 2,000 years. The first condition or step to the physical return of Jesus is that Jerusalem will return to Jewish hands. And it happened 50 years ago. And Jesus said that in one of those until scriptures in Luke 21, 24, that Jerusalem would be under Gentile domination until the times of the Gentiles were completed. Now, the second until scripture, and this is very important, that must be fulfilled before Jesus can return physically to the earth, is also found in the Gospels. Jesus wept over the holy city because he knew he would be rejected by the national leadership. And so he cried out his famous lament, which is found at the end of Matthew chapter 23. He cried, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you. How often I long to gather your children together, even as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings but you refused. Behold, he said, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, you shall not see me again forever. No, he said, you won't see me again. And here's the second until. He said, you won't see me again until you say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. This second until verse puts a condition upon the physical return of Jesus to planet Earth. It says that the people of Israel must summon Jesus, Yeshua, by welcoming him with the words, Baruch haba Shem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. After the rapture of the church and during the time of Jacob's trouble, known as the Great Tribulation, God will once again focus his attention upon the Jewish people in order to restore them to their primacy. And during that time of great pressure and upheavals, many Jewish individuals will put their trust in the Lord as their King Messiah, Savior. They'll refuse the mark of the beast, the Antichrist system, because after all, Jews were marked and tattooed with numbers by the Nazis during the Holocaust. During the tribulation, the Jewish believers will include the 144,000 from the tribes of Israel mentioned in the book of Revelation. And these Jewish believers during the great tribulation will cry out to Yeshua, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, a third until verse also teaches us that Jesus can't return and save Israel until the church, the fullness of the Gentiles, is complete. 
And the verse is Romans 11.25, where the Apostle Paul made this revelation. Speaking to the church at Rome, Paul wrote, For I wouldn't have you to be ignorant, brethren, of this mystery, lest you become puffed up and conceited. And here's the mystery. Paul said that a partial blindness has happened to Israel. Forever? No, only until the full number of the Gentiles are brought into the church. And then afterwards, all of Israel shall be saved. We have to understand that the fullness of the Gentiles is a Bible idiom that describes the total number of born-again believers throughout church history. It'll be all of the saved, those who've been born again, who've been grafted into the Israel of God, the one new man, the body of the Messiah. For the past two millennia, the Holy Spirit has been calling out from among the Gentile nations, a born-again people, a royal priesthood of disciples of the Messiah. The Lord began building His church on the day of Pentecost, and the church age will end abruptly at the rapture when the Lord descends in the clouds and calls out both the dead and the living members. At that time, the church will be full, complete. And when the last Gentile is saved, the fullness of the Gentiles will be finished, and then and only then will the temporary blindness upon Israel be healed and removed. For nearly 2,000 years, the Jewish nation has been hardened and blind towards Jesus. As it is written, also in Romans 11 and verse 8, God has given them a spirit of slumber, eyes that they shouldn't see and ears that they should not hear. While the Gentiles were being gathered into the Israel of God from every nation. But after the rapture, the great tribulation will be a time of super high pressure and Israel will at that time summons Jesus with Baruch Abba, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus prophesied it, and so it shall be done. He said, you won't see me again until you, Israel, welcome me. Now let's move on to the fourth until verse, which must be fulfilled before Jesus can return physically to the earth. And that's Acts 3, 21, which teaches that Jesus will remain in heaven until the restitution or the restoration of all things, until that time. And as a backgrounder, we have to listen to the Apostle Peter's sermon in Acts chapter 3, which he gave at the temple complex in Jerusalem. And uh, starting with verse 13 of Acts 3, Peter preached to his generation. He said, you handed Jesus over to be killed and you disowned him before the governor Pilate, although Pilate had decided to let him go. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead, and we are witnesses of this. And Peter continued, he said, Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets. God said that his Messiah must suffer. So Peter said, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out and times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And so he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. And, and Peter said this key verse, heaven must receive Jesus until the times of the restoration of all things as promised long ago through the holy prophets. So, as the Apostle Peter prophesied, Jesus will remain in heaven until the times of restoration. And have you noticed that these are the times of restoration? God has worked all around us, restoring all things. The nation of Israel is in the process of a great and mighty physical restoration. The forests of Israel are being reforestated. The deserts are blooming and filling the face of the earth with fruit. The capital of Jerusalem has been restored and its 
often quipped by people that the building crane is Israel's national bird. And at the same time, all of this has been going on in Israel. A parallel movement is happening of restoration in the church. The gifts of the Spirit have been restored. The healing arm of the cross has been restored. Many healing evangelists have been willing to pay the price to believe God that all of His promises in this word are true and worthy to be believed, including 1 Peter 2.24, which says that by the stripes of Jesus we were healed in the atonement. Well, now, there is a fifth until verse that's found in the Old Testament book of Hosea that I want to share with you today that must be fulfilled before Jesus returns physically to earth to set up his thousand-year rule from Jerusalem, the millennium. And this verse is one of the most amazing and specific end time untils. I'm going to start with chapter 5 of Hosea and verse 14. God is speaking of the judgments that he will inflict upon Israel for having rejected the time of Messiah's visitation. These are very serious verses, and we have to face the facts of history. God said, For I will be unto Ephraim as a lion, and as a young lion to the house of Judah. I, even I, will tear and go away. I will take away, and none shall rescue him. I will go and return to my place, God said, until they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. Well, up to this point in time, Israel and Judah are unrepentant concerning the rejection of Messiah. But the passage goes on to say that in their affliction, they'll seek the Lord early. What offense is it that Israel and Judah must acknowledge? Because the passage doesn't say offenses in the plural. The word is in the singular. The offense is rejection of the Messiah and his visitation. He was rejected for baseless hatred. Chapter 6 of Hosea continues the story. In Hosea 6.1, we now hear the Jewish nation responding. It says, Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he has torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. I ask you solemnly, has this happened in history? Did God tear them and smite them? The history of the Jewish people in the diaspora, the pogroms, the wanderings, and Ultimately, the horror of the Holocaust. All these were tearings and smitings. But thankfully, the passage also promised healing. And at this point, I need to mention 2 Peter 3, 8. The Apostle Peter admonished us in that verse. He said, Dear friends, don't forget this one thing, that with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years are like one day. And so with that in mind, let's read Hosea 6, 2. It prophesies, After two days he will revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. So in other words, speaking in Bible terms, after two days or after 2,000 years of wandering, punishment and suffering, the Jewish people will be revived. And in the third day, speaking of the soon coming thousand year millennial reign of Messiah, God will raise up the Jewish nation and they will live in his sight. However, the Lord says elsewhere, and we have to bear this in mind, in Ezekiel 36, 37, that for all of this, he will yet be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. God's saying that he will require the Jewish people to petition him to bring about their national restoration and salvation. In that great chapter of Ezekiel 36, God describes the last days when the Jewish people return to the land of Israel. It's marvelous. Ezekiel 36, the Lord says, But you, mountains of Israel, will produce branches and fruit for my people Israel. 
for they will soon come home. And in that chapter, God says, I'm going to look upon you with favor. The land will be plowed and sown, and I'll cause many people to live on you. The land that was desolate. Yes, all of Israel. Those desolate towns will be inhabited again and the ruins rebuilt. God says, I'm going to increase the number of people and animals on your land. And God promised they'll be fruitful and multiply. He said, I'll settle people on you as in the past, and I'll make the land of Israel prosper more than before. And then you'll know that I am the Lord, because I'm going to cause my people Israel to live on the land of Israel. The United Nations needs to listen to this chapter. God says they will possess it, and no longer will God make them listen to the taunts of the nations. And no longer will Israel suffer the scorn of the peoples. The sovereign Lord declares, I'm going to take you out of the nations. I'll gather you from all of the countries and bring you back into your own land. And starting at verse 25 of Ezekiel 36, God promises, and this is extremely important and prophetic, I will sprinkle clean water on you and I'll cleanse you from all of your impurities. God goes on to promise that they will be born again because he says, I'll give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I'll remove from you your heart of stone and replace it with a heart of flesh. And God says, I'll put my spirit in you and enable you to follow my decrees and keep my laws. Then you'll live in the land that I gave to your ancestors. You will be my people and I will be your God. Then the sovereign Lord says in verse 32, and I want you to know Israel that I'm not doing this for your sake. In fact, he says, be ashamed and disgraced for your conduct, people of Israel. But in Ezekiel 36, 36, the Lord declares that he's doing it because the surrounding nations will know that I, the Lord, have rebuilt what was destroyed and have replanted what was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it, he said, and I will do it. Yet, I remind you of verse 37, where God says, he will nevertheless be inquired of by Israel to do all of this for them. So let me take you back to that very significant until passage that we read in Hosea 5.15. God said, I'm going to go and return to my place until they, that is Israel, acknowledge their offense and seek my face. Well, I want you to know that this verse is already starting to be fulfilled. And if it's already starting to be fulfilled, we had better sit up and take notice of the lateness of the hour on God's prophetic agenda. Recently, we interviewed a Hebrew Bible scholar named Ariel Cohen Aloro from Jerusalem. He is not an ordained rabbi, yet friends and colleagues call him a rabbi because of his decades of scholarship. Rabbi Ariel Cohen Aloro is an Orthodox Jew, but he's not a Christian. He's not a Messianic Jew, yet he believes that Jesus, Yeshua, is the Hebrew Messiah. Rabbi Ariel has begun to acknowledge the offense of the Jewish people of having rejected Jesus for baseless hatred and for having sold Israel's greatest native son to the Jewish priesthood for 30 pieces of silver. It is Rabbi Oriel's desire to see Jesus reinstated into Orthodox Jewish culture in order to integrate Jesus back into mainstream Judaism and in order to return Jesus to the Jewish community as the authentic Messiah. Rabbi Oriel and his rabbi are proposing that according to Jewish law, the offense be acknowledged and repaired. As a descendant of the Levitical priesthood, the Kohanim, he intends to buy back Yeshua, as it were, according to proper Jewish law, to return Jesus, Yeshua, to the Jewish community by doing two things. 
First of all, by reenacting the ceremony of the redemption of the firstborn son, which is a Levitical ceremony found in the Torah. Through this biblical ceremony, symbolically, Rabbi Ariel and another well-known rabbi intend to buy back Yeshua from being shamefully sold, just as the patriarch Joseph in the book of Genesis was sold to an Ishmaelite caravan by the sons of Jacob. To his mind, this is part of tikkun olam, the repair of the world. Secondly, they are proposing a retrial of Jesus in order to exonerate him of the false charge of blasphemy. Because the offense of selling and rejecting Yeshua is being acknowledged by prominent rabbis, according to the prophecy found in the book of Hosea, we should understand that soon Jesus will indeed return. And when he returns, he will surely fulfill all the other messianic scriptures concerning the son of David. Well, you may still be asking yourself, how can we be sure that Jesus will return physically to this earth? But all we have to do is look around at the signs of the times, specifically at the reconstituted nation of Israel, which is a modern day miracle. And look at Jerusalem in Jewish hands. The rebirth of the state of Israel and its capital city, Jerusalem, being once again under Jewish control, are biblical guarantees that Jesus is coming soon. Even now, God is continuing to gather the Jewish people back into their own land because he favors the return of the Jewish people to the land of Israel at this time. And anti-Semitism, tragically, is rapidly also shaking the Jews out of the nations. God's restoration of Israel should jolt us into doing the work of an evangelist to bring in the harvest of souls while there's yet time to do it. Time is very short to complete the fullness of the Gentiles. And it's my prayer that everybody who watches this program will commit their lives to the Lord. It's so important not to delay your surrender to the Lordship of Jesus so that when he comes, he will appear as your savior and not as your judge. And how can you be ready? Well, the Bible promises in Romans 10, 9, that if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Amen. Well, in the meantime, please stay in touch through social media on our website at exploits.tv where we post weekly videos and where you can sign up to receive our electronic newsletter, Exploits. And so, always contending for the faith and praying earnestly for the peace of Jerusalem as a watchman upon the walls, I'm Christine Darg. Shalom. What an amazing panorama of Jerusalem, the city of the great king. To the east is the Mount of Olives, and beyond that, the Judean wilderness, the Dead Sea, and the nation of Jordan, where presently 600,000 Syrian refugees have escaped. It's hard to imagine that right beyond this horizon, there is a holocaust going on amongst the Christian population of the Middle East. That's why the Jerusalem Channel has been created, to bring you a perspective of biblical events in the Middle East. When you visit our website every day, we have updates on news, prophecy, and what's happening and how it all tells us that Jesus is coming soon to establish his rule in this city. We want to invite you to become a supporter of the Jerusalem Channel. If you give in the United States, please know that your gift is tax deductible. And in the United Kingdom, we can claim gift aid on your donation. And so we invite you to get behind the Jerusalem Channel. There's never been a day like right now. We have so many opportunities to share the gospel in the remaining times of the Gentiles. Israel is rising again and God is visiting this nation. So stay in touch at exploits.tv. I'm Christine Darig. Shalom.